Hi, it's Simon, and this one's pretty special. This is the Opal C1, and it's attempting to make some waves in the tech community. If you take your live streaming or remote video meeting seriously, you may have been doing what I do and hooking up your mirrorless camera with a third party app to improve your video quality. Well, the Opal C1 is a 4K webcam that promises DSLR quality video in a tiny form factor. But there is a further twist to this story. If you keep an eye on the tech space on YouTube, like me, you probably follow and trust the mighty MKBHD. He's actually invested in this company. That has to mean something, right? The C1's development has also been backed by some of my favorite creators like Sarah Dicci. So when the team at Opal reached out to me, I was super happy to put this thing through its paces. Now what's super intriguing about this camera is I think it could be a bit of a low key workhorse for streaming, creating and everyday productivity. It might even make it into my podcasting setup. So I wanna find out what this can do for myself and see if this could be a daily driver for you and for me. Now, before we answer the big question, is the video quality really that good? I have to just take a moment to appreciate some good design when I see it. I mean, look at this thing. The packaging actually won a design award. And I'd say that is a good reflection of the camera's build quality and design that follows that up. This for me is one of the best looking and most satisfying pieces of tech I've handled for ages. It was designed by Kenny Sweet. He designed things like the Beats by Dre headphones and the Pixel Watch. And for me, it's this all metal built, uh, this slightly textured matte finish on it. It feels fresh, minimal, and the design details, to be honest, come straight out of that Dieter Arms playbook. So there's no logos, no bright colors. And let's be honest, it kind of suits my aesthetic, right? Well, that's all great for my workspace, but does the function match the form. First off, this shot was shot on the C1 in 4K with some manual settings and oh, I think that looks really good. If you told me it was a mirrorless camera, I think I'd believe you. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, but maybe I just like my own face or something. Anyway, we are gonna compare this camera to the MacBook built-in camera in a moment, but first, the C1 has a few cool hardware and software features, I think, that make all of this stuff happen. There is a Sony IMX582 camera sensor in here. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. Just know this, it's large, it's a half inch sensor that is really big for a webcam, and that sits behind a 3.3 millimeter f1.8 lens. All of that is gonna combine for a seriously high quality video setup. Up. The precision machine aluminium body and integrated speakers for me really stand out. These little dots, I think they look really great, but also they hide a very important purpose, which is to actually create surprisingly good video sound quality. Opal call this their mic mesh system, and there's also on the back a heat sink, uh, as well as uh, a single USB-C port for quick plug and play with a Mac. I also really like the industrial look of the camera mount and the tool for this, as well as the coiled cable. It's a really great package. I particularly though find that the magnetic cover is a particularly good idea, not only because you can travel with it, keeping it protected really easily, but also you can just pop that over your lens when you wanna be absolutely sure that you are not being recorded or on camera on a video call. Pretty cool. So let's talk about the big question. Is the video quality and camera really that good? Well, for starters, what makes this webcam stand out for me is the bokeh, you know, that simulated shallow depth of field for a blurry background. It's probably the best I've seen on a webcam. Now, yet yeah, this is partially software generated, but it means we can adjust the level of background blur and with the f1.8 lens and the right settings, it looks surprisingly buttery. It's far superior to my M1 MacBook camera and gets a similar image quality to my Fuji mirrorless camera in my opinion, but at a fraction of the price. I've also tested out the Insta360 Link camera, another 4K camera that is certainly much closer as a competitor to the Opal C1 in that premium price range. But I think the Opal C1 offers a warmer image and the natural background blur is a real bonus, making the C1 a serious option for content creators out there, as well as use in video calls. When it comes to software, I like the Opal app provided. It's 
quite well laid out and enables more custom and manual settings for dialing in the video. I found this was actually really worth it when you really want to hone in your settings to get the best possible image, as with any camera, and what I think are pretty amazing results for a direct to laptop camera. As for the controls the app offers, I can adapt all the usuals, manual and autofocus, brightness, contrast, vibrance, and I really like the manual focus option here actually for keeping a consistent focus for video calls. There are also some pretty unusual options such as a touch up to smooth out your skin if you wanna do that, if you're having a bad day, and even a pixelate option. I'm not sure what you would need this for, but it's fun. Now, perhaps the most knowingly fun option though is the loop record option, which means you could most obviously record yourself reacting in a, let's call it a pointless meeting, play it back to the other people in the meeting and go and have a coffee. But who would do that, right? On audio, there are adjustments for gain, mute switch, and some improved noise cancellation options. Now, having tried this out for a while now, it's gonna be pretty difficult for me to go back to that MacBook camera. The quality of the image, the adjustability, just make it so much more of a webcam for video calls. And whilst I still do love rigging up my Fuji mirrorless camera, the regular setup can be properly annoying after a while. So this is a really great alternative that I can just leave set up on my desk or clip onto my laptop on the go. I've really enjoyed the number of comments I've had from people on video meetings about the quality of my video since I've been using it. I actually think I'm gonna try using this camera soon as a kind of third wide angle recording for some video interviews that I'm planning alongside my mirrorless cameras. The fact that I can record 4K direct to my MacBook at this quality makes it a really versatile bit of creator kit. Oh, I can't stop doing that. Right then, let me know what you think of the C1 in the comments. Now, whilst this is a premium item, I think it delivers great quality results for the money if you know you have a use case for it. Let's be honest, it's not a simple why not purchase for a lot of people. But if you regularly work remotely, place a high importance on video calls or stream and create content, I think this is a great value game changer for your workflow. And I think MKBHD was right to invest in it. You can check it out via my link in the description. And if you want to improve your workspace even further, I recommend watching this video next for my latest desk setup recommendations, or this one for the ideas that have made my time working from home so much more enjoyable and efficient. It would be great if you left a like, subscribed if you haven't, and until the next one, well, I better get back to creating. See ya.